Hello everyone, True Zero Emissions here. Okay, so following this line of thought and that I just was, was considering in the previous video, which I don't know if it's going to upload before this one or after this one, because sometimes videos upload out of order. Um, but following the train of thought of my previous video, where we were talking about, where I was sharing with you my thoughts on what is battery charging and removing the electrons from one pole to the other, and are the same electrons just moving back and forth in the battery? Do they ever leave the battery? And if they do, do they just go from one pole to the other? Or do they just go directly across the poles? Or do they go through, through the wires and then go to the other side of the battery? Is that what's happening? Because um, in battery discharging experiments, we were learning how there's different ways to wire, uh, to wire a battery, to discharge a battery, right? Look up the loving giving path as an example. That, that has many different names, but it's also called splitting the positive, splitting the negative and using two sets of batteries and running a load in between and having a difference in potential, right? So one set of batteries have higher voltage, one set has lower voltage, and then, as, and then we, we connect the negative to the negative between the two sets of batteries, and through the positive, we run a motor or a, a light or something, and we can keep moving the energy back and forth. So that sounds to me like no electrons are lost, right? We're just moving them from one pole to another, and we're doing work in between. Now, so if it's if it is true that a battery when it discharges it just the electrons go from one pole to the other and then charging the battery doesn't add electrons I'm, as a possibility i'm just considering this if we do not add electrons to a battery when we're charging it but we're just moving them from one side back to the other side back to the charged state i'll call it that or the charged pole i'll call it that and um if that's all we're doing then the energy that we're using right from the wall that we're paying for that energy is creating the conditions i'll call it a polarization condition right it's creating a polarized a polarization condition that allows the battery to go back into a charged state now why is this interesting to me and why am i considering this as a possibility well because i like to do thought experiments just like einstein did and like millions of other people in the world and billions of other i think we all like doing thought experiments right so um now how, how I've been saying this for a long time, but what are some different ways that we can move those electrons from one pole back to the pole where we consider the battery charged, right? What are some different ways of doing that? Now, some things I want to try is really, really high voltage and especially high voltage spikes. Why? Why is that? Why would I want to try that? Well, I want to see what it does. Now, of course, I'm not telling you to do this, because as you can see, I have lots of batteries here for experimenting with, right? Now, uh, these are different kind of chemistries, lithium polymer, lithium ion, lead acid. Now, my understanding is all batteries, or we could just say 99.99%, but it's all batteries. It's supposed to be all batteries, theoretically speaking, but we'll just say there can be exceptions. All batteries, as a possibility, may have an infinite lifespan. How is that possible? Well, let's consider that everything in the universe is energy, right? And coming straight from Harvard, we have a professor, and more than one, it's, there's many professors and many experts throughout the world saying that there's no limit to how long the human being can live. And we're not talking about just living without end. We're talking about living healthy. Imagine living at the age you want. Let's say you want to be a certain age. You can get your body to that age and you can keep it there. This is not impossible. In fact, nothing is impossible. In science, all things are possible. This is what the greatest minds on the planet have taught us. Now, if you want to say, if you want to, now this is just my thoughts, okay? If someone wants to say, well, I need proof, I need this and that. Okay, you know, that's fine. I mean, that's, if that's what interests you is someone showing you things. I happen to be someone that likes to do thought experiments myself. I like to see, I like to what I'll call push the boundaries of, of the imagination. Um, I don't know how exactly I could explain this to you, but I've always understood just by looking at the material universe that we exist within and knowing that that, that material universe is sustained by the infinite energy fields of space, right? I've known this my whole life since I start, started to think because I wanted to know where the material universe came from. I wanted to know that infinite energy field that sustains the material universe, what sustains that? Oh, guess what? It's the material universe. It sustains it. They sustain one another. Talk about over unity. Talk about 
perpetual motion. I mean, then people can take those words and twist them and put a spin on them and make them look like, make to make fun of people and to, to, to ridicule and to, to turn thought off. But I'm interested in the thoughts that can be grown into something that we can do something with, right? So, um, and we've learned that our mistakes teach us the most. So, so if that's true, how exciting is it to know that worst case scenario, we get to learn, which is really best case scenario. So, so we can't go wrong. There's no, is all we can do is imagine, create, and go beyond, right? Now, if you're being discouraged by people, because some people are surrounded with people that say, don't think, stop thinking, don't you, oh, you're using your imagination again, stop doing that. I mean, if that's, if that's the case, that each person has to make their own decision. I mean, we need to, I think it's important to be inspired, right? So we, each of us are responsible for, for finding those things in our lives that inspire us and to, to both be inspired and inspire others, right? Like a reciprocation, right? A reciprocal process. So um, that's something we each have to do for ourselves. And I think it would be great if school could teach that. And I think school's trying to teach that. School's trying to teach all these important skills about de-escalation, right, so we can stop having wars, and about um, communication, better communication, the value of life, and uh, that there really is enough for everyone, right? I mean, just think about it. The universe provides all, right? The universe provides all. All the energy that sustains the material universe, everything that we see and feel and touch, even our thoughts themselves are powered by the energy fields of space. Okay, and it's not talked about. That's just non-existent almost, right? Or when it's talked about, it can be used very technical words, and then people can debate what the meaning of the word is and the definition and what does it exactly mean, and no, that's not what it means, and yes, it is. And I'm like, I'm just talking about energy, energy. The, everything's energy. We know everything's energy, right? E equals mc squared. Energy equals matter times the speed of light equals mass times the uh, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, right? So uh, I was reading that, that that's uh, also a way of saying this is how much energy it takes to create mass, matter, right? E equals mc squared tells us how much energy we need to create the material universe, to create material. And nature just naturally does it. So I'm thinking about this battery in my motorcycle. It says 2016 0SR. It has a 13 kilowatt battery. This uh, motorcycle, and a lot of people really, I'm gonna, it's called level three charging. A lot of people want level three charging. The zero, as far as I know, does not have that yet. You can add level two charging to it, um, which is still, it's, that's good, level two charging, right? I, I don't know how many, it's a couple, it takes a couple hours to charge. But level three charging is, the, is really, really fast. That's like, think of fast Tesla charging, right? That's level three charging. Think of Chedimo, think of, I think it's called, uh, I can't think of the, the letters. Is it CCS? Uh, I can't think of the word, but it's like Chidemo. It's the other plug. It's the same power, though. A lot of Chidemo chargers have the CC, I think it's S, or I don't know the, the, the letters, but right next to it, it'll have those two, those two plugs on the same charger. And that's for uh, electric motorcycles, electric vehicles. And I was seeing that the Energica has, uh, it actually has, if I understand correctly, has level three charging. And I think the Harley Davidson Livewire has it, even though I haven't been able to confirm that. I need to confirm that. Um, I've written Harley and I just haven't gotten a response from them. I just think they're very busy. Uh, and maybe I'm just asking too many questions and they're getting annoyed, I don't know. But, but uh, I did ask for confirmation that there's level three charging because I was reading people's article, I was reading some articles where people were saying, oh, it used to have level three, now it just has level two. And uh, anyway, fast charging is important, and um, I want to be able to charge this motorcycle as fast as it can accept, right? So what's the fastest charge this can accept? And I'm using Roger chargers. I'm thinking about putting four on this, four Roger chargers on it, so that when I do charge it, so I'll put two on each side. I'm thinking about putting them right here. There's a space here, here, and on the other side there's the same space. And the new V4 chargers, which are four kilowatts each, I'd like to run them at about 2,500 watts each, or maybe 3,000 watts each, or maybe 3,500 watts each, as long as they don't overheat. I don't want to overheat them, but that way I can charge this uh, in about maybe an hour or so, approximately, which is going to be very helpful. Um, I have this plug made that's working very well. You can see this plug. This goes into the back of it. This plug plugs into the uh, where the, the Q charger, I think it's called the Q charger. It, this plugs in where the Q charger would go. Now this is the part number SBS, that's an SBS, 
75X, okay? See that? It's an Anderson Power Products plug. You can buy these on Amazon. But what I saw was when you buy them, they have to, you have to put them together. There's, there's a, you have to put the clips in there. And I'm not sure how easy that is or if you need a special tool to do that. But if you did, I'm sure it wouldn't be hard to find that. But that plug, I'm going to go ahead and show you where this plugs in. So if you look back here, I'm going to take this cover off. There's a cover right there. And you see that plug right there? That's where this plug goes. And I'm going to show you by plugging it in. I'm going to show you how it plugs in. Okay, let's see if I can do this. So this plug is not hot right now. It's not live. It's because the motorcycle's off, okay? The only two times this plug is on, and please confirm this for yourself, research this. The only times that these plug, this plug is on, is hot, or has power going to it, is when the key's on, okay? When the key's on, or when the onboard charger's plugged in, which is, uh, plugs right here. See this, this is, it's like a computer power supply plug. I'm not sure of the name of this plug right here, but see that? See that plug right there? That's just like a computer power supply, but there's, there's 1300 to 1400 watts going through there. And if you use a regular computer power supply plug, it will overheat. It'll get real, real hot and soft. And that could be very dangerous. I'm using the one that came with the motorcycle, which as you can see here, you see this? That's a very thick cable. I don't know, let's see if it says anything on there. I think there's some writing on there. Let's see. Oh, 15 amps at 125 volts. See that? There it is, right there on the plug. 15 amps, 125 volts, and you see what the plug looks like? Just like a computer power supply, right? Let's see if this side has any writing on it. Looks like Y-U-N-G, I don't know if that's an L-I or a U or an L, I don't know what that is, something right there, L-I or L-1, then a Y-C-12, up here is an E-15-2-6-3-5, if I read that correctly. Now this plug gets hot right here, so I think it might be damaged in here, and one day I may cut this and add a new end to it if I can get the end, which I should be able to do. I am switching the plugs over here, over to the, uh, for the chargers, I'm switching to uh, the Roger, Roger himself, the, for the Roger chargers, Roger has switched over to um, XT90 plugs, everything's XT90 now, if I understand correctly, instead of XT60, right? So I'm making plugs right now, uh, as you can see, this is an XT90 now, and that's what's in this charger here, that's an XT90, see that? Now this has the XT60 still, that one, okay? But this is the newer one with the XT90, okay? Um, so yes, those chargers could go here and here, they can go right like this, and I could have four of those, or I could just run two. At like 3,000 watts, that's 6,000 watts going in there, which would take two hours to charge the motorcycle, right? Because it's a 13 kilowatt battery. So, uh, well, let's see. Um, 13 kilowatts, if it was drained all the way, which I wouldn't drain it all the way, I'd probably bring it down to like 12 kilowatts. And then, yes, it would take two hours to charge, which is the time limit for the charging. When we charge, it says parking two hour permitted, right? So if it takes more than two hours to charge the motorcycle, that's not good. I need to be able to charge it in two hours. Now they do make level two chargers, but for this motorcycle, it goes up here in the, the charge tank and used, it was $2,000. And I think it's like 7,000 watts, right? Well, the Roger chargers are 4,000 watts and they're about 300, just over $300, I think. Confirm that for yourself. Prices change sometimes, but I think it was just over 300, definitely under 400 last I checked. Uh, but confirm that for yourself, but that's significantly less than buying the regular chargers that, now these are just power supplies. People also buy these, 
uh, the power supplies. Now, Roger has these modified. He has work done to them. But these were, uh, a lot of people buy these power supplies and just use them like that. Roger does his own modifications, has his own modifications done to these. And you can buy a Roger charger. And I, I recommend those. I've been using Roger chargers for years on my micro mobility. All my, you know, electric bicycles, electric uh, everything, electric scooters. And that's because I can control the voltage and I can control the amperage, which I like. I like being able to, to set it to what I need. And that includes slow charging. We can still slow charge if we want to. We don't have to, put high, we don't have to do fast charging. Um, and the charger is getting better and better. The chargers are getting better and better over time. And now they're... Um, and even the old ones, like this one, this is an old, considered an older model, but it's still... Look at how versatile it is. I don't know if you can hear me right now because that fan's kind of loud. But this was... Uh, Let's see, this one is 5 volts to 146 volts, um, up to 15 amps. You know, these newer ones can go, this one can go 40 amps. That's a lot of power. Now that's for level, that's when I plug into a level 2 charge station on that one. So uh, when I plug into a level 2 charge station, I, I can pull a lot more watts out of that. But I would like to be able to connect to a level 3 charging station someday. And that's why I'm looking at the Energica electric motorcycle. Because Zero doesn't even have, as far as I know, they don't have a level 3 charging capability yet. Um, so people that get these, you know, people like the motorcycle so much, the Zeros, they're willing to accept level 2 charging. I think, I don't know if they come with level 2 now as standard. Um, that would be nice if they did. Or if you have to pay extra for that, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's nice either way, because if someone doesn't have the extra money for the level two charging, they can still use the motorcycle with the slow charger, which is the 1300 watt charger. But that would take probably about eight hours to charge, right? Approximately. So anyway, this is the plug now. And now this plug, to use this, I would have to, if I understand correctly, I have to either turn the key on, that plug becomes live, and then I can put power into it. Or I can just plug in the this onboard charger which is under the motorcycle and then that opens up this this power and then I can add power to there I can add up to 7500 watts in there see I was told I can run up to five 1500 watt uh, Q chargers I think they're called Q chargers those are uh, 1500 watts each and I can run five of those which I if I recall correctly at 7500 watts right into that plug that's why I doubled the wire here because I didn't have real thick wire I had 12 gauge wire, this is 12 gauge, so I doubled it just to be sure. I don't want that wire getting real hot. I prefer the wires to not get real hot. So, um, uh, what else? So we were talking about the, uh, we were talking about the battery and charging the battery and, and I'm thinking about uh, how can I extend the range of the battery, uh, extend the range of the motorcycle, right? Extend the range. How can I charge it while I ride the motorcycle? Different thoughts, you know, some thoughts are how can I charge the battery, the same battery, while I'm riding the motorcycle, which means this is the battery that powers the motorcycle, but can I also add some power to it while I'm riding it, right? Now, my understanding is batteries do not like to be discharged and charged at the same time. They do not like that. So if the electrons are going from one side of the battery to the other, and then I'm trying to push those electrons back to the charge state while I'm pulling them, I mean, that makes sense that it would be... That, that, that could create like um, a tension or heat. Now, the very, very efficient way, one very efficient way I know of that, that is universally accepted among engineers, I haven't heard anybody disagree with this, and people have told me from the beginning to do this, they're like, just get a separate battery and charge that other battery that's not connected to the motorcycle just charge that battery up while you're riding the motorcycle. So let's imagine a trailer, right? A small trailer. And I, let's say I have an alternator in there or four alternators in there so that when the wheels of the trailer are turning, and I imagine a trailer with a one wheel, like one wheel, instead of having two wheels, that way it's very narrow, right? That's how I visualize it. Like, like uh, I think we who had a trailer for bicycles like that, it's one wheel wide, right? It's just one wheel but how can I get a motorcycle trailer like that that can handle a motorcycle? And then when I turn, it allows it to turn and everything. And then the, the, the trailer, let's imagine, I'm imagining the wheels on the trailer or the wheel, when the wheel turns, that could be connected to turning an alternator, at least one alternator, but possibly let's say four alternators, right? And those alternators, however many alternators I use, are charging batteries. Now the batteries ideally would be a big battery like this, right? But let's say it's smaller, it could be a smaller battery. 
And now, one question we could ask ourselves is, how much less range are we gonna have when we're pulling this trailer that's charging batteries? Well, first of all, it's important to know that because we're charging batteries, let's say these batteries are dead, right? Let's say it's the same battery, 13 kilowatt hour battery, and it's drained all the way down. It needs to be charged up. That battery will charge very easily when it's not having uh, energy taken from it at the same time we're charging it, like this battery, right? That's my understanding. Now, there is ways to charge a battery. There's, there's ways, I've read and studied of different ways to charge the same battery that we're using. But I'm gonna say for the moment that I haven't, uh, how can I say this? I'm gonna say that I understand, <laughs> I, I need to take my own advice right now because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, am I literally talking myself out of doing, doing the charging the same battery because, because I was gonna say that if it's less efficient to charge the same battery, it doesn't mean I shouldn't try it and see what happens, right? Yes, so I need to try that. And I do wanna try that, I will try it. And if that's a lot easier than adding a trailer and adding all these alternators, but here's the thing, if I add a charging system to the motorcycle, where am I gonna put the alternators? I have to somehow mount those on here somewhere, right? Where do I mount those? So I have to figure that out, right? There's space here. Is there enough room here to put a couple alternators? And if those alternators are spinning, I took the voltage regulators off to let the voltage just go up, right? I wanna use those high voltage spikes and literally just use a full wave ridge rectifier, right? Just use a full, a regular full wave ridge rectifier just like this. This one's burned out but one that's good, right? I think this was a 250 volt, 50 amp bridge rectifier, right? So, so literally the input on this is, so it's these two. I marked this one, see that says negative there and there's a positive there. That means these two are the inputs, okay? This one and this one are input. So I'm gonna put the signal coming from the alternator into there, into here, and then I'll have a plus and a minus coming out of these. Now I imagine that because the alternator's north, south, north, south, it's going back and forth, right? If you look inside of an alternator, it has a north and a south, a north, a south. It's the opposite poles. But I think batteries like that, and I wanna use that. I wanna use those waves, but I need to make them DC, right? That's my thoughts, I need to make them DC. So this will change it into DC. This only costs a couple dollars. These are a couple dollars each, called a full wave bridge rectifier. I wanna use this, have the alternator connected to this, and then this connected to the battery, and what happens if I let that charge the battery, but not overcharge it? That's the thing, if I take the voltage regulator out, this is just the way I wanna do it. If I take out the voltage regulator, that's not gonna limit the voltage, because like alternators have are made for like 12 volt batteries, right? Alternators are made for uh, charging 12 volt batteries, like in the car, right? Which is fully charged, like 14.3 volts or something like that. Now, if I want to charge this battery, which is 115 volts, I'm gonna take the voltage regulator out, and I have to see if the alternator can even give me 115 volts, hopefully more, hopefully like 116, 117, or even more. Now, if it gives me a couple hundred volts, right? That's great, I, that's what I want. I want it to give me high voltage. Now, my experience with charging things with like an AC signal, I'm gonna call it AC, going into a bridge rectifier, not smoothing it out with capacitors, right? Just using, letting it be like, a, like letting it pulse, do all the pulses it wants, but it's gonna, be, it's gonna be DC. So the battery will recognize that polarity. It's just simple plus and minus, right? It's gonna recognize that. So is that bridge rectifier polarized, giving me a polarized signal, a simple polarized, a simple plus and a minus for the battery? And then what does the voltage of the battery do? My understanding of G batteries is, my research and study indicate that G batteries was using extremely high voltage spikes. Now they're not the only ones doing this. I've read of many experimenters doing high voltage spike charging of batteries, whether it be lead acid or different kind of chemistry, right? I'm not saying to do this yourself. I'm not encouraging doing this. This is just a thought. These are thought experiments. I'll share my, my experiments with you. And I'm not telling anybody to do this. I don't want people getting hurt, okay? It's easy to get hurt with batteries. A lot of people have. I've been hurt. I had third degree burn on my thumb. You can't see it now, because what did I use? Well, first of all, I went to the, the I went to the, um, that's where the burn was. This is third degree burn, okay? Everything's fine now. It feels fine. It looks, you can't really tell. I even had a burn there. 
but that's because we have one of the best burn clinics in the world, one of the best, uh, called the Grossman Burn Center in West Hills in California. And they put like a silver on my thumb and I just did exactly what they said. I think you want to use that for up to 30 days, but not more than 30 days because it, it could become toxic to our, to our bodies. So you just, I just followed their instructions exactly. And then after that, when it became time to no longer use the silver, the, the cut, the burn looked really good, but I still used Redmond clay, bentonite clay, same thing, Redmond clay, bentonite clay. I mixed it into a paste. You can keep that stuff in a jar already mixed with water. It's great for burns for all ages, Kid, children all of all ages, adults of all ages. And a lot of people keep that in their medicine cabinet in a jar mixed into a paste. And if you get a burn, you just stick your hand in there immediately. And the way it's described is that Redmond clay, the bentonite clay, it pulls the pain out. Some people describe it that way. You don't feel pain. My third degree burn didn't hurt when I put it in there, when I put it in the, in the clay. So I use clay day, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, except I would let it air out twice a day for a couple hours, right? But other than those couple hours each day uh, of letting it air out, I would keep it wrapped with and sealed so it doesn't dry. You never want the clay to dry if you use Redmond clay, if you use bentonite clay. Um, I need to make videos specifically on that, but there's already a lot of videos out there for, for using bentonite clay or Redmond clay for burns, but I can make some too. We can never get enough of the relevant and important information of how to live healthy, how to help one another, how to de-escalate conflict, and how to create solutions together. There's never too much of that education, okay? And that's what we're building together. We're building community. We're building bridges of understanding. We're building uh, living longer, living healthier, less cancers or no cancers. I mean, we have so many solutions right now. And some people say, oh, oh, but these solutions are going to mean that people, that businesses are going to go out of business and, and companies are going to have to change what they sell. I mean, I think people are passionate about products that are healthy for us, that are good for us, that are, that, that that connect us, that give healthy life. And I think that's the path that we're on. And we're each responsible for investing in those, in those technologies and those ways of life in our own particular way, each of our own way, right? Um, how about, I mean, I've heard my whole life, I've heard my whole life of people that focus just on making a lot of money. And then when they retired, they passed away before retirement or they passed away right after retiring. Okay, I've heard those stories my whole life, even when I was a child. And I literally went to funerals as a child of people that were very wealthy that had, didn't even have a chance to retire. And they planned retirement their whole life. Imagine that. So to me, it helped me understand that the importance of health, taking care of ourselves and helping one another in every way that we can, but always first helping ourselves and always simultaneously, if we can, helping others at the same time, right? And that's why I make videos. I'm inspired to share my journey of learning and I get so much more out of, lear I learn so much more by sharing what I'm thinking about. I mean, it's like an immediate uh, uh, a win for me. You know, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm sharing, and I'm getting exponentially back immediately because my imagination just is lit up. It's just lit up with possibilities. And that's why I make so many videos. You can see I have 13,000 videos, and if I could make millions of videos, I would. Uh, and I will, I, I will do my best to do that. So uh, this is True Zero Emissions. We're going to sign off for now. But think about that battery and think about how can you charge a battery in different ways. And I'm going to continue to talk about, to think about, to do thought experiments about this. And I'm going to look for your videos. You can call the videos uh, Charging Batteries in Different Ways or Polarizing a Battery or Depolarizing a Battery. I'll look for your videos. I, I, I do a lot of research. I'll find your material. And I just want to thank everyone for being on the journey of learning, for being in this life. This is so exciting. Remember, we don't just live on a planet. We live in a universe that is rich and diverse with infinite possibilities. And those possibilities are real and we are living them, right? We live in infinite possibility, right? Like, try to imagine how one cell in our body, what the life of that one cell is, right? And then you multiply it times trillions. <laughs> it's like life is itself almost unimaginable, almost, right? Can we imagine it? Can we even imagine what we have, how much we have, how much potential we have? 
what it means to be here, right? People go, well, what's the meaning of life? And my question to you is, what would you like it to mean to you? Because to me, it means sharing, connecting, giving, receiving, being able to receive, right? Being able to give, being able to share, um, being inspired by one another, right? Inspiring one another, being inspired, sharing the inspiration. Um, uh, not trying to fix people, not trying to change people, but just respecting and valuing one another as we are and appreciating that we're all doing our best. I think we really are. I really think we're doing our best and I'm doing my best and I look forward to making more videos. I'll see you soon in the next one. Okay, everyone, True Zero Mission signing off. We'll see you soon. Bye.